We are back with our entertainment critic and Oz historian, Ryan Jay, who's got three new movies to talk about, including a reimagined Oz film. So, let's get started, Ryan. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. All right, number one, the creator, PG-13, in theaters. This movie is so excellent. First of all, it's a new, big, splashy, blockbuster sci-fi film. The first AI movie that comes out of the time where we know that AI sci-fi films aren't necessarily science fiction anymore. Yeah. It plays more like horror. And this is a war between the robots and humanity and nuclear imagery and stuff. It's very, very dramatic. What and, everybody whoa. fears. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it, it was that that part's scary, but it's not based on any previous intellectual property. It's not, you know, adapted mm. from a book or anything else. I love that originality and it's so strong and so good. And well, how about it? the cast? Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, John David Washington is in it, and he's the star. We also have Allison Janney, who plays like a military leader. Um, Ken Watanabe is in it. Very, very good. And what I love is how it really humanizes some of the robots, where it almost reminds me of like, you know how you cared about the alien in E.T. or Gizmo in Gremlins? Yeah. And, like, you know, so it has that really great balance of emotional uh, investment and great, incredible, spectacular action and effects. Mm. Who's the main robot there? The main robot? Where? What, yeah. You see a main robot? No, no main no. robot? Okay. Oh, the main, oh, there's a little child. Oh. Um, and it's very, very good. There, that's the main Whoa. robot. Yes. And again, you just really feel a lot for her. Ooh. You like the design? The design's incredible. It's very much like um, Star Wars, a little bit of influence in terms of the vehicles and some of the effects and even some of the costuming. But it's just, again, so original. See it. It's okay. so excellent. I loved this, and I feel like this is a movie you'll remember and want to talk about. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. What about Muzzle on Demand? This is a really fun movie that's kind of like a new buddy cop movie, not a comedy. It's a drama, an action drama, and it is written and directed by a uh, filmmaker. His name is John Stahlberg, okay. and I caught up with him to chat about the making of this film. Take a look. Good girl. You gonna get back out there? So I said click, click, bow. What inspired the story for this film? I was driving on a highway on the way to a rap party for a film I did called Crypto in New York. And I saw a police officer and he was chatting with his partner. And when we pulled up alongside of him, it revealed that the partner in the passenger seat was a dog. And it just triggered the whole idea for the story for me that we could do theoretically a spin on this kind of meet your new partner movie and do it in a sort of dark and mysterious and, and interesting way. And you're going to get a new partner and then you're going to get back out there. What are the specific challenges in working with a canine actor? You have to have the trainers on set. It's difficult to get the actors to connect with the dog because the dogs have to be taking cues over their shoulder from multiple trainers. And when they get tired and they, and they don't want to do the scene anymore, like they're done. You have to have multiple dogs and they each have different personalities and they, they're good at different things. So it just becomes this, this Pandora's box of, of technical complications, but it also kind of makes it fun. What would you say to potential audience members who might hesitate to see this because, you know, they don't want to see anything where a dog is harmed? Well, number one, no dogs were harmed in real life, obviously. We were working hand in glove with PETA and, and um, the Humane Society. They were on set. I absolutely love dogs. In fact, that's one of the reasons I made this movie. Right now, I've got a big French bulldog. It also has a warm underbelly. And there's, there's a lot of sort of hope in the film. It's ultimately something that will be... Uh, worthwhile for people who love their dogs. You want to have a scratch on you? Oh, thanks. Mm. I love Aaron Eckhart. Stream it. It's available now on demand. And okay. it's such a great, you know, uh, illustration of the mutual bond between people mm. and their pets and the work they do. Okay. It's awesome. Yeah. Gail. Okay, so this is now streaming on the Chilling app. I've never heard of that right. app. Behind them. It's a new app and it's oh. really good. And what's great about this is it's a horror film that's based on the Oz universe. So basically, British filmmaker Daniel Alexander did this like trailer version for you, this idea for a horror version of The Wizard of Oz. It got more than three million views or uh, like went viral. Wow. And based on that, he did this short film. And so I'm reviewing this short film today, but I had to track him down. Uh -huh. So here's my chat with him. inspired you to make an Oz horror film? It was being so um, wrapped into Return to Oz after I saw that for the first time as a child and it absolutely freaked me out. It kind of stuck with me from then and then getting older and, and getting into filmmaking and telling my own stories. I just wanted to experience Oz again, all over again. And I thought, 
let me try and put my little twisted spin on there and, you know, kind of envision where would Dorothy be now, um, you know, after all she's been through as an, as an older woman. About Dorothy, the slippers. Stay away from us! Why did you choose to do a sequel as opposed to like a remake or a reimagining? I, I know that there's so many remakes and people taking completely different um, takes on a story and changing the canon, which is, is absolutely fine if, if that's what you want to do. But for me, I just wanted to continue my journey in, in the sense of enjoying the, the, the Wizard of, um, of Oz, essentially. The short film ends with To Be Continued. So does that mean that we're going to see a short film sequel or possibly even a feature length film? The To Be Continued is basically the foreshadowing of what we're trying to do next, which is the feature film. So it, it's happening. It's kind of like a vehicle to kind of allow people to see the world, the stage that we're trying to create. And then once we get to the feature film, we can now take them into the world that we, we want to build. Well, you know, Return to Oz was so ahead of its time in 1985 as a dark version of Oz. He's striking while the iron's hot as a cult classic. Now, this is so good. Stream it now on Chilling. Ugh. And then let's look forward to the full film soon. You mm. can follow Ryan J on social media Thank at Ryan you. J Reviews for his full entertainment reviews. Check out his website, ryanjreviews.com.